Hi there, and assalamu alaikum. Today's video is about making a resume, or a resume as they call it in American English. I'm going to make a very simple resume that doesn't really involve a lot of procedure, something anyone with very limited knowledge of InDesign can also make, so let's get started. I'm going to start by creating an A4 sized document in portrait mode. As uh, it's just a demonstration, I'd like to keep it as simple as a one page resume. Once my page is created, I'm going to grab a rectangle tool and make a rectangle covering the top of my page. I'm going to fill it with blue color. At this point, it's an impromptu design as I haven't really planned a particular design on my mind. All right, so next I'm going to grab the rectangle frame tool and place it on top of the blue rectangle like this. I plan to insert an image here, which is becoming pretty popular these days in certain companies. It has even become a requirement as well, which was never the case earlier, but things are changing and they're changing fast. Okay, so I'm going to grab the rectangle tool once again and uh, make another rectangle right below the blue rectangle. This rectangle will hold the career objective. Uh, for now, I have filled it with the yellowish tone, but I'm not sure about this yet. Like I said, it's an impromptu design. I might change the color later. So let's see how it goes. Next, I'm going to grab the line tool and make a divider. So I'm going to have the experiences listed on the right side and uh, education, skills and professional qualification on the left. This line can be a dashed line as well, should you want. You can change the color as well. Now I'm going to grab the text tool and make a large text box covering the rest of the page for me to list the professional experiences. I think it will be nice to have a slim blue rectangle at the bottom as well for me to fill in contact details like email, address and, and the rest. So let's just hold shift option on a Mac or shift alt on a PC and drag the blue rectangle down to copy it and then we can resize it to make it narrow. Now that the structure of my resume is almost set, let's select the rectangle marquee tool and go to file and then place and place an image. By the way, that's not me. I'm not so handsome. Since it's a large image, I'm going to click right at the center of the image and move it to the appropriate setting that I want. All right, once that's done, I'm going to grab the text tool and drag a text box to type in the name. And uh, let's name him John Smith. Don't have a reason for that name. It just came to me spontaneously. All right, I'm going to have the first name in lowercase. Actually, only the first letter is going to be uppercase. And the last name I'm going to put in uppercase just for emphasis as last names are pretty important. And uh, I think I'll also change the font color for the last name. So let's change it to something gray. Let me also tell you here that I've decided to stick to just one font or maybe two fonts maximum. And since it's a resume we are talking about, I don't really want to use any fancy fonts. I'd rather stick to Times Roman, which is a serif and, and signifies seriousness. So I suggest whenever you design a resume for yourself, Try not to use very fancy fonts and try to stick to a maximum of two fonts and not more than that. Now let's add a text box to the yellow rectangle for the career objective and then I'm going to right click and fill in the placeholder text as this is just a demo. I'm going to change the font to Times Roman and make the words career objective bold as well. Now let's quickly make a text box on the bottom panel and uh, add our imaginary address, mobile number, email address and the rest of the jazz. Alternatively, you can always insert icons for mobile number or email or Insta accounts, etc. to further beautify your resume. And then I'm going to center align it. Now I'm going to type professional experience in all caps and uh, then add any company's name and then copy and paste the text that we used for career objective to signify the roles and responsibilities in that company. Or let's do one thing. Let's just go to window and then styles and select paragraph styles and create a new paragraph style. 
I'm going to name it heading as illustrated and uh, make the font bold and uh, also check the underline box. I don't really want to overwhelm it with a lot of changes. Now each time we use a heading we can just use this paragraph style instead of making individual changes to each heading. I'm going to make another paragraph style and name it subheading for company's name here and let's just make it bold and hit OK. Now let's copy and paste the entire paragraph a few times presuming varied uh, experiences in different companies. All right, in fact, we made a slight mistake here. So let's shorten this text box to make way for a narrow column on the left. And I'm going to use this column for dates. It's like a from and to in each company. And then using the text box, I can always add the tenure served in each company. So let me copy and paste it next to each company's name. And uh, let's just fill in imaginary dates. Now let's concentrate on the education side of things. So let me type in education here on the left. And uh, I'm talking about academic qualifications. So a master's or bachelor in whatever. So I'm filling in imaginary details and dates at this point. Next, let's add professional qualification. And you see all these headings that I'm typing in. All we need to do is just select the text and click on the heading paragraph style for them to take effect. So it could be heading or subheading depending upon what you want to change and how. Moving on to skills and considering it's for a graphic designer, uh, let's add the major applications of Adobe Suite. So I'm going to have of uh, Photoshop and Illustrator, InDesign, and uh, Premiere Pro as well. Now using the rectangle tool, I'm gonna make these dashed lines, like small little rectangles, all black. There are other ways of doing this as well, but like I promised you, I'm gonna make it very simple for you to follow. Now I'm going to select the last two and change the color to white and fill the stroke as well and uh, make it to 0.25. This signifies my expertise in Photoshop. Similarly, I'm going to copy and paste it to the rest of the apps here and color them white depending upon how big of an expert I am on these apps. So whatever software or apps you are going to mention in your resume, you can do something similar to this. Since I have some space left here, I'm going to even add the languages known option and add some languages and a similar meter to gauge my expertise on these languages as well. So let me also change the this yellow rectangle to a gray color. It's uh, going to have a much better contrast with blue here than yellow. OK, I've gone ahead and reduced the font size, the dates here to have them all on one line. And uh, now let's do one last thing, and that is to add a drop shadow or uh, maybe an outer glow to the image here. So right click on the image and uh, go to effects and then outer glow. Let's see how it will look. Mm, let's reduce the size a bit. I think let's do a drop shadow instead. It will look much better. So on the left, click on drop shadow option. I th think I like the angle already. I'll just change the size to uh, 0p2 for both uh, X and Y offset and uh, hit OK. Perfect. Now our resume is ready. So let's export it as a PDF to check how it looks. So let's go to File and then Export. I'll select uh, Document as my folder. And uh, from the Format drop down, select Adobe PDF Print option and uh, hit Save. And then from the Export option, hit Export. Now let's go to the Document where we've saved uh, the PDF and uh, double click on the file. And there you go. That's the final version of our resume. All right, guys, so that concludes our session today. I know it went a little longer than expected, but I hope there were things you've learned from the video. So do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet on Wednesday now, goodbye and thanks for watching.